ignore_time_segment_in_scoring Walam Tonya ti mobe jube rola dawa danding being alu welcome jang Tonya keso on Fatu Network being alunda mbalo soto jang you know a great and a giant you know memo ya le kafaya Usman Ture Gambia di unamati and he's the son of the soil we are all proud of him a man of wisdom and here I qualify him as a fountain of knowledge. Um, you know, he's so intelligent and the whole Gambia is proud of him. Te Usman Moneka Swin Gatsby. So we'll be moving from uh, Wolof to English so I, everyone can benefit from it. Because he's someone that having him in the show is something is something to be proud of. So Usman, you are highly welcome to Tonya Keso. Wow, um, thank you so much, Mohamed. Yes. And um, <laughs> it's indeed a pleasure of wanted to do this yes and finally we're able to make it and to <laughs> our brothers and sisters out there the yeah. gambians um i'm indeed glad to be able to exchange mm -hmm. with the gambians both mm -hmm. in the country and mm -hmm. those abroad mm -hmm. and africans um in general thank you so much yeah. so thank welcome you. um habat sauda is our main sponsor for this program so thank you so much Cisa habat sauda and the team uh, we appreciate you a lot and the only individual as well supporting the program is our chairman boy boy of Rikama. we really appreciate you so now straight to the program um let's say who is osman yeah, um, thank you so much. You know, um, Usman, just like uh, many other Gambians, mm -hmm. I was um, born in the Gambia. Of yeah. course, two of my parents all came from CRR. CRR. Uh, a very Where common CRR? area called Balangar. Balangar, yeah. yeah so yeah, yes. my mom was from Kirdemba and my dad from Kirjivel. Yeah. Um, but they moved to Kiang before I was born. Kiang. Kiang. Where in Kiang? And in, in, in Kiang, in Sare Samba. Sare Samba, okay. So after being in Kiang for a few years, they left Kiang and then uh, they left like Sare Samba and went to another community in Kiang. Mm -hmm. But after three years there, they came back to um, Sare Samba again. Was your so, dad a petty trader? Uh, so my dad is an Islamic scholar. Okay, so, um, all right. All right. Yeah, he is literate when it comes to Islamic and as well as Arabic. Mm -hmm. And he has a madrasa at home. So oh. we all started from there. Through, through that setting. And yes. um, that is what so he has you, been you doing. Did, you did uh, um, Quranic studies too? Yes, I did. Right. I did. Yeah. So in fact, that's, that's basic in our house. Okay. Um, that's that's number one thing like we all started you memorize the Quran uh, not memorized but at least um, I finished yeah okay yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah, but, like but, but the good thing is yeah. um, we were not able to uh, memorize like myself and um, some of my family members as well but some did some did. and the ones who were able to do because I was doing it part-time like I'll have to do the Dara and part time go to school, school so yeah. I wouldn't. I was not really having um, the time, time yeah. you know, to to really dedicate um, that efforts like many other people were doing in the house. Mm -hmm. And to me, um, going to school, in fact, was just accidental because um, our village was given a school by the government, and they said every household need to send a boy and a, ch and a, and a boy and a child and a girl child. Yeah. So I was the one around the same age of going to school at, at the, the time. time. Yeah. 
And, um, so meaning uh, your, your siblings, most of them, before you did not go to school? No, no, no. Only one of them okay. went to school. So before me, um, we, I have only one brother that went to school. Mm -hmm. And um, apart from that, it was me and my sister, okay. um, all of us in school, and then complimenting each other okay. in a space where there were not like many people that were really into school. So, of course... Uh, we will go to school in the morning and come back and go to, to the Dara. Dara and even wake was, up the was following it, Was morning. it uh, Arabic school in your own house? Um, uh, you know, some people have it locally in their house. Yes, it, it's usually locally in, in, in the house. So okay. it's more of like um, just like the Dara, as we call it um, yeah, locally, yeah. Mm -hmm. than that of um, the usual uh, madrasa settings as we have now. So all that was in Cairn? All these things was in Kiang. Yeah, which, which, which village? Kiang Sare Samba. Kiang Sare Samba. Sare Samba. So that's where you started your primary yeah, school? Yeah, and, and that's where I started my schooling. And that's why I also speak Fuller fluently. So oh, you speak Fuller? Yeah, like it's Fuller, <laughs> Wolof, and partly because I did my junior school in Kiang Kayaf, which is Mandinka dominated. So that's how I picked the Mandinka as well. So you so, can speak Mandinka? Yes, like I do Mandinka, <laughs> Fuller, Wolof. I mean, basically, yeah, yeah. And, and I used Linguist. to even speak <laughs> Serer at some point. Wow. Because in our village, um, there were people, most of the individuals mm -hmm. were Serer. Mm -hmm. So we used to go to their houses, so we picked the languages. So up till now, I have, I mean, I do not speak it as I used to before. But, but at, least at least you least, understand. Yeah, I understand when they speak and I understand the numbers as well. Because mm -hmm. that's important, you know. Yeah. yeah so. so going forward, um, your school, your junior school, yeah. high school. Yeah, so um, after Kiang, I mean, I, I did Sare Sambalo Basic School. Okay. And um, from there, I moved to Kayaf Upper Basic School. Okay. And uh, when I was finishing Kayaf Upper Basic School, that's how I decided that there was the need for me to move. So moving Kayaf was not really an easy task. Because, okay. you know, um, students from the province, mm -hmm. always people that are trying to make difference, will always aim at traveling to the combos to complete their schooling. Yeah, that's the fact. And these are some of the reasons that affects the education system in the province because yeah. the very best are sent <laughs> to the city for, to, for, for them to go to school. For so, their school, yeah. Yeah, so this was, I mean, something that the headmasters in, in the province started to question. So people that are in the teaching field will tell you that some headmasters were really not happy mm -hmm. having their students move into the city and then leaving the high schools in the province. Just so like it, go, it went to a point, even yourself may be preoccupied with that. If I don't go to the city, I may not make it. Yeah, I mean, it was. So yes. until in 2013, yes. um, that was the first time my, my family allowed me to mm -hmm. come to the combos for a holiday. Wow. So they, and this was like during the summer. And you, I came, I was in Sincho Alaji, okay. very close to Masru Senior Secondary School. So okay. I attended the summer classes there, like not just to be here for a whole holiday without yeah, doing, doing nothing something. and jumping you around. You just want to engage yourself. Yeah, so I wanted to engage myself. Mm -hmm. I paid for the summer classes and mm -hmm. attended it. And, you know, I realized that, okay, yeah. like there we are trapped that... I mean, the, the good students are there. Yeah. Now I was in this class with people from all over here, mm -hmm. Masru being one of the best schools in the Gambia. Yeah. And I mean, there was no different. You know, questions, interactions, exams, tests. I mean, I was seeing the positive results despite coming from, you know, the uh, province. Yes. And then I told my dad that, oh, I think I will have to transfer to the school. Yeah. And initially, it was not, I mean, they it was asked not easy, a lot yeah. of questions, Since you know. Why? Yeah, why and As all to that. why you have to move. Yeah, but, <laughs> but you know, my, my, my brothers, my family members were ready to accommodate me here. Yeah. So that is how I started and I lived with them. So um, you came to Masru? Mas yeah, I transferred to Masru Senior Secondary School. What Kenya. year was that? This is 2013. So 2013, 2013 2016. I was in Masru. Oh. I, I, I know they will say this. A very stubborn <laughs> student indeed. Yes. Really disturbed most of the teachers. But I mean, it was worth it. Like yeah. we just needed students that question things and, and interact with yeah. teachers, but in a very respectful way. Yeah. Uh, I am still. But you were that uh, inquisitive type. You want to know things. And exactly. Everything. Exactly. So, I mean, in class, I, I want to ask like real questions. Uh, I mean, and, and this is important. And that's what I normally advise many students. You mm -hmm. don't read for a, like to go and attend a class only mm -hmm. or to go and read after a class. Mm -hmm. But it was just important to read 
stuff around your scope, whatever you can grab, and have the discussions because that's what the classroom is supposed to be. Yeah. That interactive session between the class, between the students, teachers. So high school, you study arts, commerce, or what? Yeah, I was doing um, arts, but arts. in arts you do economics. Oh, okay. So Maslow is one of those schools that blend things, you know, yeah, pick yeah, from yeah. this to to that other end. So it's. In the arts field, you study um, economics as well. All right, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, so, yeah. and then you completed high, your high school. Yeah. Um, and then to where? Yeah, when I finished my high school in yes. 2016, yes. you know, um, now, I mean, there was just one dream school in Gambia, UTG. <laughs> so <laughs> You had to go there. Yeah, so um, then I had this class teacher, uh, one Mr. Modus Mare, who I am still very, very grateful of. Um, yeah. Two, yeah. Uh, Mr. Modus Mare. Um, I remember I was with some of my friends. Mm -hmm. We went to visit the school, and he was like, "Usman, um, have you bought the UDG form?" By the way, I was like, "No, no, no. I, I am yet to," because I was really thinking, like, you know, going whether this year or waiting for another month or so. Yeah, yeah. Then he was like, "No, no, 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 no. Just, just go with them and buy it now." At that point, I have zero dollars in my pocket when he was saying this. Yeah. So he he walked to another fellow teacher and you know took six hundred dollars from this individual. Yeah. And then gave it to me to go to Faraba then you know wow. um, to buy the UTG from, from where from from Masru to Faraba. Wow, great. So we left that very day, Masru. We went to Faraba. I mean, that was our whole day activity. Bought the form, we filled everything, put in. Submitted. Uh, yeah, we submitted. The results came, we submitted, and everything was fine. So we have, I happened to make it to the university thanks to this individual. Wow. So he has been a big mentor for me. Yeah. And the good thing is I was his number one student because I was like, <laughs> his subject was, was one of my best areas. What, 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 what subject was that? He used to teach government. Wow, well, government. And, and, and that's, I mean, so... You, you love government. I, like I love to read about <laughs> government. <laughs> yes. I, I, yeah, so... That's, that's so great. I, I, I love to read about government. I, I want to emphasize on that. Yeah. Before, I mean, I don't know if Baro is comfortable hearing that I yes. said... I, yes, yes. I love government. I'm not going to the state house. <laughs> I love to read about government. Yes. So, um... Yeah, so uh, we, we, we did that and I made it to the UTG uh, to study development studies. Okay. So at UTG, um, there was a whole shift now. It was like getting the toughness of academic and also going through the real challenges of the Gambian education system. Yeah. Now that I'm able to read, I'm able to write, I'm able to, able to contextualize certain things. Yeah. And UTG was that um, vacuum for me. Uh, in as much as there are challenges, but I was able to grab things that I've never seen before. So I was having access to reading materials. So wh where were the challenges? Was it um, materials yeah, to I study mean, um, and all that? Accessing materials, um, reading, I mean, course guides and all these things were big challenges. Okay. For instance, you're doing courses where um, getting the real literature mm -hmm. is, is, is a difficult thing. Mm -hmm. um, some of the books that you're using are maybe books written 30 years ago. It's good. But okay, there are it's second not, edition, third yes, edition, yeah. fourth edition. It was not related at the time. So, you know, getting, grabbing all these things was really difficult. Yeah. Until I met some uh, few lecturers that were really um, supportive enough. Were you on, on scholarship or was a family paid? Yeah, so it was partly a scholarship from okay. friends um, okay. that put their money together. And one of the things that I, I mean, it was so, so amazing that yes. the same individual who paid my um, school when I was That's coming to Masru yes. is the same individual that continued to pay my, um, you know, university tuition with his um, support from his friends and etc. Wow. So, I mean, I spent time like many other young Gambians pulling strength, I mean, reaching out to different individuals from family to family from... You know, wherever you put your hopes in. Uh, I mean, in almost all ministries, I've dropped an application letter for a scholarship. Wow. Like any other student in this country. But then those scholarships never came. But thanks to God, um, you know, with, with people Good having friends, trust, know. you know, that, that, yeah, you can definitely do something. So with that plus some little actions as, as a young individual, yeah. you know, um, you doing some business, petty things, you know, <laughs> just try to make ends meet, yeah, you know. Yeah, rubber, rubber. Exactly, <laughs> the, the normal rubber, rubber. So yeah. I'm sure like many other Gambians have also 
went through and, and I've seen um, UTG students as well doing a similar thing. All right, so you are able to do that and then from development studies, I, do, you start, do you have your master's here? Yeah, so I am doing it right now masters. and I hope that I will be um, done with it by the end of the year. By the end of the yes, year? Yes, by are, the end What of are the you year. doing? So it's also a master's in development. So I am yeah. still in the development field. Yes, why, why, why the development field? Yeah, uh, you see, one of the things that I've realized is it's one of the most challenging issues, mm -hmm. the most part, I mean, problematic questions mm -hmm. that the Gambia, African societies, mm -hmm. have not been able to answer today is found within the development discourse. Because mm -hmm. um, many countries around the world, um, in the way they've looked at their development, at some point they make a pause and ask questions. Where are we? Where are we heading to? Mm -hmm. And what are the means? And, and what have we achieved so far? Exactly. Yeah. What do we achieve? Like, where are we going to? Mm -hmm. What do we have? And these are the questions that in the development discourse mm -hmm. we seek to provide answers to. Or even if you cannot provide the answers, you put that enabling environment that, that gives the discussions, that, that, that brings in the ideas from different aspects. Mm -hmm. And I went into the discourse, start to read about development concepts from theories, context, economics, studied different economics trajectory of, I mean, different countries around the world. Mm -hmm. And thanks to, you know, some of the courses and instructors that we have, it has to be beyond what the university um, provides, of right. course. Exactly. But it's something that, you know, it, it just gives the motivation that, mm -hmm. okay, once you, they're able to tell you this, then you can quest for more using this angle. So then I realized that our main problem in Africa today when we speak is basically development. Like, why is it that the infrastructure is not set? Yes. Why is it that the human development is low? Yeah. Why is it that our education is still the way it is? Is why it the is mindset it? or people are not ready for development? No, but I mean, um, mindset is just one thing. Skill set is also another thing. Um, I understand that there is a mindset that really affects us, mm -hmm. but every individual wants development. Yeah. Development is something that people want yeah. themselves. Individually, they want. Everyone is obsessed with it. Exactly. But so, to start it. Yeah, but I mean, it, it takes that vision for one to spark a lead by designing a development that reflects the interest of every individual. Mm -hmm. So if we do this, you don't need to have every individual to be visionary, but you need one visionary individual, at least one, mm -hmm. whose vision reflects the interest of the majority mm -hmm. and also they have a message in put packaging it in a way that every individual want to take up responsibility. Yes. Today, if, if we look at all these countries that are striving today, that are doing well, there are individuals who have championed that particular trajectory. Mm -hmm. And that is the visions that they have been able to sell to their people, and that is why they register the development that they have today. Yes. So I am not saying that it is wiseable for every individual to just go there and read development. Yes. But Sometimes it at is at least a bit of it. Exactly. Because it's, it's very uh, pivotal in human. It affects so, us. Yes. And in a country like the Gambia, a um, few days ago, I was speaking with um, you know a, an audience, and this is some of the things that I was telling them that mm. you see we live in a country where is there where there's no holiday for politics. Every day in Gambia is politics. Every day. Every day. And do you think that we is hindering uh, us? It is a. It is good yes. if the politics is mature. Yeah. It is good if the discussion is it's a mature discussion. Yes. It is development oriented. And that reflective. And reflective of the common interest and the common goal. Yes. These are things that if we have within our political discourse, mm -hmm. I mean, every society that is thriving today is answering these questions as they move. Because mm -hmm. time, I mean, the complexity of the way things are, the rise of technology and different other aspects of livelihood, we have to have that development discourse on a daily basis. Yeah. But what, to what extent, yes. um, what do we actually exchange? In Gambia, I think it is the irony, it is the opposite. I mean, um, I wouldn't want to be that, that harsh <laughs> to the Gambians, but I, I just want to see yes. a country yeah. that really reflects mm -hmm. um, deep into what matters for the future that we want to build. Mm -hmm. And Gambia, to me, we find it really difficult to mm -hmm. reflect on our past. 
This is a country that gains independence in 1965, um, call it 1970. Republic. But imagine for how many years mm -hmm. we are still in a discussion that is still not leading us anywhere. Why, why, should, why, 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 why do you think the problem lies? Because we got it wrong at some point. Um, you see, countries open up, countries put development models, countries adapted systems that really works. Try things on their own, it fails, they battle with it, seek the expertise, the knowledge of different societies, and take best, best practices and make good things out of it. Mm -hmm. Today there are Gambians, whom I can attest to the fact that they are behind one of the greatest success stories around the world. Like? Gambian experts participating in certain economies in different countries. I've seen Gambian experts participating in building development concepts for so many countries. Gambian experts working almost everywhere around the world. In as much as it is a small country, mm -hmm. but the people are influential across the group on the roles that they are but playing. But the, they are influential outside but why do you think they are not using that same influence to develop their own country? now let us go let us come down to the gambia and see yes what is the enabling environment what environment have we put in place as a country <laughs> to observe these very brains in the gambia <laughs> to give them a chance to give them time to give them an opportunity mm -hmm. to put those knowledge, mm -hmm. those skills that they have mm -hmm. into something meaningful to this country. Mm -hmm. You know, I find it very difficult to convince people mm -hmm. outside of this country that, okay, we have really poor people in Gambia. Mm -hmm. Because to them, once you say, oh, the population is about two million. They doubt it. They're like, so everybody's rich then? Yes. Because that is it. They wonder, like, what is that thing that we are not getting right? Yes. You tell them we are next to the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, that's, that's another plus. What are we doing with the Atlantic Ocean? We have the sunset. So, I mean, <laughs> and, and the list goes on. Yeah. But here is the point. I, want to, I want, really want Gambians to reflect yes. and understand that. Don't you think corruption is a part of the things that are making Africa in general not to grow? I mean, uh, corruption is, is, is one of the biggest issues that has really affected African societies and Gambia in particular. Mm -hmm. Remember, mm -hmm. um, this is the Gambia. On a daily basis now, mm -hmm. we hear news of scandals. Whether you're in the Gambia or outside of the Gambia, we are hearing news on a daily basis of issues that are happening within our own system by individuals who should be exemplary, mm -hmm. by individuals who should be setting the development trajectory that we are just talking about. Yes. Now, how do you mobilize a population mm -hmm. into a development course? Mm -hmm. How do you mobilize a population that they have a role to participate in delivering the services, the development that the whole society desire, and, it is, and that course or that vision is led by individuals whose aim on a daily basis mm -hmm. is compromising their office works mm -hmm. for their personal benefits this is this is rampant this is is i mean it's 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 the order of the day yes we have to be we have to be Realistic. truthful to ourselves yeah. and you see mm -hmm. some of the things that really affects our societies the gambia and even beyond is honesty and integrity yeah when people are honest if they cannot do something they say they cannot if people have integrity in them, mm -hmm. it means that they don't have to steal. So and these are values. Lack of morality. But these are values that yes. is deeply rooted in the Gambian society. That's yeah. what our history ta taught us. Me and you don't have to go to school to know that how integrity is valuable in our community. Yes. How being honest is something of a greater value. How being truthful is. How, I mean... So, 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 I mean, so they may say in, in see wall of communities in line, they call my alalu mbolo do sa alal. Yes. Because more mu loko, then you look at dink. And not just in, I mean, you go, I mean, these are there. They used to have slogans about this. Nurturing young individuals mm -hmm. on, on how to just comport themselves. So you believe um, people are competent, they have the knowledge, they have the technical know-how, but at the end of the day, integrity and honesty is what is lacking. This has been, our, you see, 
even if you are not competent yes. and you are honest, yes. then the problem is solved. How? Because what you can't do, you say you can't. And then you resign. Wherever you don't have competency, you seek the expertise of others. So these are morals, these are values, these are principles that we must not be afraid to speak about. And people who do not exhibit a good track mm -hmm. of this mm -hmm. don't deserve anything in our public offices. They should be fired. They don't deserve anything. They don't even deserve to be there in the first place. Talk less of being fired. Talk less of firing. Yes. Because firing is not even the solution. Yes. They will just go and do it on another level. But they don't have to be there. And these are guidelines. These are things that have to be nurtured in the education system again. Yeah. What makes a government strong? I believe um, you read government a lot. You have the three main organs of the government, like the legislature, the judiciary, and the executive. Right. They function separately, but they have what we call complementary function, checks and balances. So don't you think in Africa, the executive overrides these two other organs? And yeah, I mean, um, it is a, a technical area when yes. it comes to, um, especially the presidential system as yes. that of the Gambia, yes. where these three organs of government are separated mm -hmm. but serve as check to one another. Yes. But on the other hand, it says no one should act as a control towards the order. Then you are limiting exactly. the interference of the order. Because the interference of one arm of government to another yes. undermines the real democratic system that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. If one individual can dictate the functions of one organ to another organ, then therefore they are affecting the real governance issues. Yes. And, and these are problems that our Gambia, many other African countries today, are undergoing. Mm -hmm. But just to tell you one thing, um, government is beyond you know, these three organs of government. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's beyond that. And that is why the individuals, the people, need to be very, very reflective when it comes to such. Mm -hmm. You see, it is important to have the judiciary, it is important to have an executive, it is important to have the legislature. Mm -hmm. But remember, these are just structures that have functions. And their functions includes everyone in the society. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we establish all these democratic institutions and compromise the real values of democracy itself. That's and what we do. I don't want to be misquoted. Yes. Um, when I talk about democracy, I want it to be understood in a real African context. Yes. Where, I mean, not just democracy as a term, mm -hmm. but what do we have as a system, as Africans as well. And these are problems that today, the Gambia and many other societies are actually undergoing because we have adapted a system that we don't have a master of. Like, and what is that democracy? The democratic system, the presidential system, in, uh, as, as a democratic system of government or as a type of government, yes. as adapted by the Gambia and many other African societies. The problem is the people who vote in people to these places or give powers to these individuals in charge mm -hmm. don't really know how to hold them accountable in these very institutions. How? What is the root cause of that? For instance, today, yes. the Gambians, the ordinary Gambians, more especially the masses, they're very disconnected from the functions of the National Assembly on a daily basis because they speak a language they don't understand. Yeah. And, and you go to the judiciary, the laws are so complex that you can even go to school without understanding them. Yes, sometimes you need the expertise of a lawyer. Exactly. Yes. Now you move to the, to the, to the executive. Mm -hmm. It's a similar thing. So these are issues that we have to understand. How do we put things into context? Mm -hmm. How do we go back to the roots to ask the fundamental questions? Mm -hmm. You see, development is that one thing that does not have to come from the executive and go down to the masses. It emanates from the masses. And that is why the success of all development, um, um, I mean, models and things that we are now talking about mm -hmm. have been supported heavily by decentralization, giving power to the local people, allowing them to initiate their own development and allowing them to lead the trajectory. So these are things that we are 
currently battling with in, in, in the in, in the world or in I Africa. mean in, in 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 the Gambia in Africa and here is some of the things that we really have to ask ourselves what is that um, what is the price of development and who are the actual players where are we right now and what role needs to be played to move that agenda forward mm -hmm. you see the Gambia. First, what is the price for development? Exactly. Because this is these are things that we must define ourselves as a country. Yes. For instance, mm -hmm. we need progress. Mm -hmm. But what are the entry I mean grounds? What are the entry wheels to it? Mm -hmm. Let us go back to the roots. Look at the education system. What are you teaching your people that mm -hmm. is in line with the country's vision and the country's development? Mm -hmm. Today if I go to the University of the Gambia. I am very proud of the university because I am a product of the university. Of the Gambia. But there is no discipline mm -hmm. that teaches us the real development model for the Gambia in the next 30 years. Nothing. Because it doesn't exist. Yes. If I should ask ordinary Gambian today, what is the vision of the Gambia in 2050? Yeah. We will all construct different sentences because yes. we don't know. There is no model set up for that. Exactly. But yeah. how do you lead a society? Mm -hmm. How do you lead a country? Mm -hmm. And you don't even know where you're heading to. That is one. That's one thing that we must answer. Yes. And sift from there. Yeah, to the players. As, we, as we're talking right now, mm -hmm. let us look at the actual players in our development discourse. Yes. From all the partners, from the government, from the stakeholders involved, so you think the players, they are very much important to the extent that they can play a role to take it from one place to another. But if the players, in fact, are not um, um, well-disciplined, development will be a problem. I mean, it's, it's facilitation. Yes. A government's role is to be an enabler. Yeah. You see, governments providing employment is a last-century thinking. Mm -hmm. Governments don't provide employment. They create an environment mm -hmm. to allow individuals to do that. Because they cannot accommodate everybody. Yes. They can't. So they have to be that enablers. Mm -hmm. Now you go to other sectors, it's the same thing. We are in the Gambia, mm -hmm. a country that has fresh water, which is very unique by the way, because mm -hmm. in some part of the river you can just put a cup and drink. Yeah. Fresh water. Fresh water, yeah. And not only that, we have the Atlantic Ozone right here. We are talking about a population of around 2 million. Two million. Yes. And this is a country that is not able to feed itself. We are crying about prices and everything when there is no model that the people know today mm -hmm. with regards to food substitute, mm -hmm. with regards to substitute goods. Mm -hmm. What are we doing to make sure that we produce our own things that we can use to substitute the goods that we are importing in this country. Yes. There are beautiful papers, by the way. I mean, tomorrow someone can come out and say, we have this policy, we have this, this. Yes, they are there. But policies are not, are not meant to be in cupboards. They're supposed <laughs> to be communicated. Yes, they are not meant they, to be in the cupboard. They, they, they're they supposed to be communicated. Mm. They're supposed to be in the hearts, in the minds of the people that needs to exhibit it. We don't expect President Barrow mm -hmm. to be an architect to construct road or an engineer to construct road or to be a lawyer in, or to be something there. No. Mm -hmm. But we want the people that do that share a common vision with him that reflects the interests of the country. And that's how you lead the people to development. Yes. And um, I'm not interrupting you, but I had this. Osman was given the opportunity to study in the U.S., in the U.K., but he chose Rwanda instead to do his master's. And if true, why? I mean, thank you so much. Um, you're very right, and <laughs> I've answered this question over and over. Yes. After my uh, first video, okay. I, I was reached out by um, different um, organizations, different Pan-African movements mm -hmm. around the world, and one of which was the Pan-African um, Engagement Society in Canada and the Youth um, uh, Descent Society in Canada. An amazing individuals. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in touch with them ever since. Mm -hmm. 
and um, they reached out and they offered to give me scholarship because mm -hmm. normally they sponsor many students I know yeah. um, to go to different universities around the world and study. So when they proposed to me about the scholarship, I, I made the choice of wanting to stay in Africa. Mm -hmm. And you see, this is not a decision that I just pick from a phone call, people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen people debate about this, fight over it, insult each other over it, when it's just a personal decision that Usman wanted to take. Why? So Why? I, Why the fights? Yeah, I mean, I've seen in different platforms people really argue, you know, insult. Why is he doing this? Why is he not taking this offer? I want to say one thing, you see, and that's why I'm thankful in the development discourse and being able to pass through UTG and being mentored by different individuals. Mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to, to, to really read the context mm -hmm. and development trajectories of different countries around the world, mm -hmm. um, from Asia, um, Europe, America, mm -hmm. Africa. Uh, we have reviewed a lot of documents mm -hmm. um, around these particular angles. Yes. So when this issue of going to Rwanda came, it is already something that I've already made up and wanting to do it myself. 100%. 100% to go to Rwanda. Like with or without the scholarship. With or without the scholarship. It was something that I intended to do. Your mind was prepared for that. It was prepared long before this. Because I've seen some things that really inspired me in wanting to go to Rwanda. To Rwanda to look into what are those things that, are, that they're getting right. You see, Mohammed, mm -hmm. we have this problem in Africa. Mm -hmm. We hardly believe our own selves. We hardly believe the things that work within Africa. It's like we have fear towards one another. Yes. In Gambia, in many other African countries, we are fine to go to Canada to be given a review of a policy that was implemented in Canada 50 years ago yes. and will come back here and happily receive it. And 50 if, years ago. <laughs> and if Senegal advises us, yeah. it's a big issue. Yes. If Rwanda advises us, it's a big issue. And these corporations is what we need to seek for the interest and for the development that we want for our societies. Right. It is vital for our progress. Mm -hmm. We have to seek the expertise. We have to understand that Rwanda success stories, I mean, in as much as I am young, but it's not a very long time ago. Yeah, 94. It's a country at 94, mm -hmm. I mean, worse than the Gambia. Yeah. They've passed through a genocide against the Tutsi that really undermines everything in that country, taking them back to zero. Yeah. Having been able to emanate from such, it takes leadership, it takes focus, it takes vision, it takes a community yes. that was deeply inspired to align themselves in a vision and make it work. So that, that inspired you, uh, inspires you a lot about Rwanda. I wanted to go and see this myself. I wanted to go and learn from this space. I wanted to go not just to read from the universities, but to interact to with the actual players. What, 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 what makes you, uh, Rwanda so exceptional to you as a young person? Yeah, like being able to prove that Africa has solutions. Mm -hmm. This is something that they have done, and it, it's just exceptional. This is what many other governments today fail to do. Mm -hmm. And that is the same system that we are tied in. I mean, you go to any other African society, we have embraced, we have followed everything said by the Western world, everything predicted, everything that they ask us to do, we do as they said. And it never works for us. So Rwanda is purely African mentality country. Well, I mean, it is an African mentality country, mm -hmm. championed by Africans, mm -hmm. and seek partnership from the world. And this is what many African countries fail to do. We look at partners as masters. In Rwanda, it's a different case. They don't see them as masters. They see them as common partners. They see them as common partners. And business is what they do. Yes. And that's why it yields dividends. It has results. So these are things that I believe a country like the Gambia, many other societies, I mean, we cannot say we have nothing to learn. Today in the Gambia, all over, there are people championing women empowerment and the list goes on. Mm -hmm. Okay, in Rwanda, it's not just the discourse. It's proven. 
beyond their imagination when it that they have women. majority in parliament. Women. That they have almost equal percentage of men and women in cabinet. You go to the private sector. Mm -hmm. So these are things that it is practical, it is happening. Yeah. It not is just African, mere propaganda. And all not that. just a mere propaganda. And people can go there and see for themselves. Mm -hmm. They can make research. So let us seek to understand some of these things. I am not saying that young people should not travel the world. Mm -hmm. If we do that, we are doing a big mistake. Mm -hmm. Every society that develops have traveled the world, have sent their children across the world, but they accompany them with one thing, mm -hmm. being patriots, and understanding and taking responsibility of knowing that they have a stake to play in their development. Mm -hmm. The case of China is a living testimony. The case of Japan is a living testimony. South Korea we are talking today is a living testimony. The case of Rwanda is a living testimony. Rwandans travel. They went to school outside. Yeah, yeah they've been around the but world. But they're equally going back to serve their societies. But it is the opposite in our context. Yes. How many Gambians today travel abroad doing a lot of things, making things work, but they have not seen an enabling environment in Gambia that will entice them to wanting to come and serve. Today, that is the message we want young people to carry. So, do you think Gambia's main problem, especially when it comes to youth, is our attitude, our approach? I mean, attitude is one thing. Yes. Development comes with discipline. Mm -hmm. That is a very, very good thing mm -hmm. to observe. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm just saying that once we establish that, we have to make sure that we also nurture that generation of Gambians that is going to say, we are proud to be who we are. Mm. We are proud as Africans. We are proud as Gambians. And we want to take things in our own hands. Exactly. We want to see a progressive society. Mm -hmm. We want to graduate from Gambia time itself to someone out there. You see, there's two things in international relations and policy studies. If you looked at the areas of countries' independence, Exactly. There is independent from and there is independent to. And the Jackson School will take this. Independence from and independent from and independent, independent to. Okay. These are two different things. What is the difference? We've been so much tied in being independent from and not to concentrate on independent to. And independent from mm -hmm. is, in another word, the negative sovereignty. We are independent from, because no individual, we are independent from being attacked. No government today around the world can come to the Gambia and just attack us anyhow. Yeah, because we are a sovereign state. We are a sovereign state. Yes. That's established. Yes. We are independent from all those things, from mm. uninterrupted, I mean, um, being uninterrupted mm. by other governments around the world or bigger powers and the, and the list goes on. Mm -hmm. But the big question is independent too. What are you able to do for yourself? Mm -hmm. Because you are independent enough to do it. Yes. And that's where bigger societies have evolved, make huge progress. And that is positive sovereignty. Mm -hmm. These are things that many countries today in the continent have refused or has zero answers to. Mm -hmm. So we must go back to understand that what do we really want as a society to move ahead? How do we do that? Do we have the ability? Do we have the capacity? The countries that we call developed today, mm -hmm. they are the countries in those stages. Exactly. They're independent to do something. They want to go to the moon. They are able to do it. Yes. They want to create, I mean, discoveries, inventions. Yes. They're able to do it. Advanced technologies. They're able to do it. Yes. But are we? And this doesn't mean that Africa doesn't really have good in ourselves. You see, we missed a very important point in our trajectories. I always say this. It will be, you know, foolish, sorry for the word, yeah, but yeah. to believe that Africa starts with, you know, colonialism and all these things. No. Exactly. We existed before that. Technology, as a people, I mean, mathematics, science, everything emanates from the second dynasty in Egypt. If you read the words and the writings of 
um, say under Job. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 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 manifested. So these are things that today mm -hmm. we don't bring in the education system. Now you move forward. Exactly. Even more recent. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we've talked about the great empires that existed, especially in western part of Africa. Mm -hmm. The case of Ghana Empire was politically structured and everything, Sankai, so Mali, exactly. the Timbuktu Empire, exactly. the wealthness, knowledge and everything. Different philosophers have traveled in the continent and All seek over the knowledge. World. Yes. But today, in our education system, these knowledge are not there. Mm -hmm. These writings are no longer there. So, um, um, people do have, they ask this question, say that we are programmed by the West. We have a programmed education. You know, it's like something that they prepare for us to go. Everybody, we see a lot of students graduating from the university. But at the end of the day, they don't have skill. They cannot even apply what they've been taught from, from the university or what they learn from the university. They, they is not applicable when it comes to practicing it. So everybody believes that I, I am a lawyer, I, I, I am an economist, I am this, but a genius. We, we like ingenious, we like people that can in, innovate, right. like people that can add value to our society, people that are action oriented. I right. think this too is affecting us. Well, Mohammed, you see, um, education is an investment. Mm -hmm. You see, in as much as we say this, it is important to be really truthful to the individuals that go into these schools. How do we treat our engineers in this part of the world? How the people who study engineering as Gambians, mm -hmm. how do we treat them? What opportunity do we give them? The people who go to the UTG or to the Gambia College to study agriculture, what environment have we given them in this field? For, to, to prove themselves. Most of them just have to graduate and become classroom teachers, like students who study mathematics and different other aspects. Math teacher. So as a result of this, mm -hmm. and education has become like an investment and business, people have to go to areas where they believe that they can graduate and make money. Yes. So these are things that if we need to answer, mm -hmm. we must do it in a holistic way. Yes. We need engineers because we have to build our country's infrastructure mm -hmm. and we want our own people to take the lead. We want our own people to have the standard. But do we give them trials? Do we give them those opportunities? Do we even have the standards in our own institutions to really give these young people that standard, that quality mm -hmm. education that they need to exhibit some of these developments? Those are where the problems are. And then that's why I want, it will be good for the Gambia to reflect mm -hmm. on some of these things. You see, it's basic. We, don't ha we cannot get up overnight and reach where all these countries are. No, yeah, yeah. it is a process and we should not undermine the process. And that is why it will be important to go back from the roots, look at the challenges from the very beginning. What is wrong in the education system? Mm -hmm. What skill do we give the young people in school? What skill, what is that knowledge that we equip them with about themselves? How do Gambians look at other Gambians. Mm -hmm. These are things that can be embedded in the school system. Perception could be more dangerous than reality. I but mean, yeah, let's, let's be frank here, let's be honest. Like you were saying, um, sometimes we have our own engineers, but we don't trust them. And they have the same or more qualification than others. But because we believe, okay, he's a Gambian, he's not. No, we don't trust him. Even in the business world, in the market world, people believe in the colored people to buy even iPhones from. So I think mentality too is something that kills us. That is a big issue yes. when it comes to Africa in general. Yes. <laughs> um, you see, this is not always the ordinary people. Yeah. I've been in airports where we will just learn, and before you realize, all Chinese have been given private road, I mean, ways to take. You just look at the crowd, you see them, the next minute there's no longer, I mean, they're all gone. Where mm. do they pass? They give them priority over the rest. Yes. Or sometimes they do it to other individuals, Americans, Europeans. Mm -hmm. So the problem is from the system itself. And this has been an issue mm -hmm. throughout our history. 
what do we really think about ourselves and that is why the likes of Marcus Garvey has invested a lot on changing the mindset of the African. That do we really love and value each other? Mm -hmm. Do we really understand that the little efforts, the small businesses that transact within ourselves mm -hmm. is a medium or a way of empowering each other and therefore it brings about those small development that we really need to start with. Yes. You see, it's two areas. It is indeed true that sometimes we reject to give offers to our own just because they are Gambians. Yes. But also sometimes people do so because they don't have trust in the institution these individuals are coming from. That, that, that too is another thing. It's another issue. Yes. So sometimes, I mean, then you look over from young and they feel like, oh, pardon mm. see. And even at the workplace, like, it's there. We, we have the belief that, oh, he's, he's educated in America and this one, UTG, no. They're not the same. That's it. So these are problems <laughs> that we really have to interrogate and, 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 you know, I mean, I'm not saying we should not go and study. I'm not saying we should um, not, you know, really make questions in the kind of development, the kind of knowledge, the kind of society that we really want to groom. Mm -hmm. But let us put Gambia first. Let us put um, development first. Let us have a time to rethink about where we are and where we go into. Mm -hmm. Let us try to have a vision that reflects the Gambian interest and Gambians in general. Mm -hmm. The biggest mistakes and things that have been disturbing many other African societies is to believe that experts have all the answers. They don't. It they is don't the have. people that have the answers. The ordinary they just people. facilitate. The ordinary people. Because they know what their problems are. They know what the solutions are. They just need people to enable them to make those things work. And these are issues that, I mean, it affects us across the board. Mm -hmm. So for the future of the Gambia, for young people out there, that is it. It is high time that we recognize ourselves as African mm -hmm. and we promote that particular agenda. Mm -hmm. But it is also important and vital mm -hmm. for young people to understand that we have a future to build. And that future takes collective, I mean, work. That future takes the efforts of different groups individuals. of individuals to come together and map a blueprint that can reflect our interests. You are one of the youngest promising Gambians, especially when it comes to development. That's what you studied. And where do you see the Gambia in the next 10 years with the, with the kind of um, um, political situation or affairs we have in this country? Well, with, with, with all factors constant, I'm sorry, but we may be having this discussion for years to come. And by that I mean we can meet in the next five years and still discussing the same problems. Why do you think the problem? Because, I mean, I, I just don't see us answering the real fundamental problems of this country. <laughs> when we talk about food self-sufficiency, for instance, when we talk, because these are core in development, these are areas that if you don't achieve, you forget about the big things, it's not going to work. Yes. I mean, design whatever thing that you want. If you don't get the grassroots right, it's not going to work. Where do we start with? Majority of Gambians do what? Farming. From hand to mouth. Mm -hmm. That's the daily hustle. That's what most of us go through on a daily basis. Yes. What is the solution to this? We entertain poverty. And, and, and you know, these are things that we have to look into the real solutions and do something about it. I'm not talking about the, the policies that we put in place just, just in writing, in speeches. Mind you, Gambia is one of those countries that have the best literatures when it comes to policies. Mm -hmm. If you're reading them from an academic background, you mm -hmm. feel happy like... You see every detail. Yeah, we are there. <laughs> come to implementation. <laughs> yes. It's like we, what we've written and what we are doing is like a totally different space. Yes. And this is there because we don't really have the actual individual trained to take the lead in this. So I want to believe that for a future, for mm -hmm. a good future of the Gambia, mm -hmm. there must be a rise in the consciousness of the minds of Gambians on the way we look at the people who lead. What responsibility do we give them? What are we trusting them with? 
what resources do we put in them and how do we hold them accountable in making plans or making efforts to get these deals done because mm -hmm. you put a government on promises mm -hmm. you hire a staff on promises mm -hmm. so these are things that mm -hmm. I mean we must look into yeah, yeah, these are things that we must look into as, as a country mm -hmm. and then get things done mm -hmm. unless and until we do I mean we will I mean, we can continue to gather over and over to discuss about this, the mm -hmm. same issue. Mm -hmm. So there must be a trajectory led. Mm -hmm. There must be a vision that people align themselves to. I'm not saying a vision that comes from one individual out there, mm -hmm. but a vision that the people align themselves to. It mm -hmm. reflects our interests. It reflects what we want and mm -hmm. for the future that we want to build. Mm -hmm. There is a structure put in place. Mm -hmm to enable us to have the ability to realize our own potentials within our own environment. Yes. There has to be these structures in place and there has to be active leaders, leaders who reflect the true values of mm. the Gambian society. Yes. Uh, political unity has been a big, big, big problem in the past years for Gambia. Right. Ethnicity, tribalism in, 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 in the sense. These two political problems, what are the factors responsible? We've seen so much tribalism in, in, in our politics. You as a young African, what advice do you have for people that champion tribalism and these ethnicity problems in the politics? Well, um, Mohammed, yes. you see, tribalism mm -hmm. is an entity mm -hmm. where politicians who have zero ideas mm -hmm. venture in. It's like their last card zero ideas mm -hmm. all you can do is to gather people based on tribal lines is to gather people based on relations and because they don't have a proper message to package mm -hmm. all they can do is to seek solidarity from tribal lines and this has really affected not just the Gambia but many African society mm -hmm. I mean, we might not yet be to the extreme, mm -hmm. but we don't want to get there. Mm -hmm. We want to eliminate it from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. We want to see a society where Gambia is what matters. And this is what I normally advise young Gambians. Mm -hmm. You see, do not belong to a party that has a surname. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. Don't belong to a party that is promoted based on tribal lines. Don't subscribe mm -hmm. to individuals who pull you to their own agenda just because you belong to their tribe. Don't be that person mm -hmm. who look at another tribe as a threat. Embrace diversity. Mm -hmm. Embrace the uniqueness of the Gambian culture. We and them is killing us. And, and it, it has not been existing. Mm -hmm. And this is why, you see, mm -hmm. the Gambia is one of those countries mm -hmm. that have I mean, these joking relationships across tribes, joking relationships across surnames, and these have been promoted by our own people For long. to promote that uniqueness and togetherness. You see, many other societies, many other tribes have come into the Gambia. Mm -hmm. Most of us come into the Gambia. Mm -hmm. We were hosted and we live with one another. Mm -hmm. This is a country where in every family that you enter in, mm -hmm. maybe one person is there coming from another tribe to join the Very the interrelated, yeah. And, and that is so unique about the Gambia. In some societies, that doesn't, you can go to a whole village where no one belongs to a, another tribe. Yes, they're all the same. They're all the same. Yes. Osman, so, we have about three minutes. And it's important because I'm really enjoying. This is the first time I've been so, uh, no disrespect to my other guests. Uh, I love the conversation, but to be so calm and to be listening to my guests, I think this is one of the programs that I've been, you know, you, it's like you pushed me to a corner, you strangled me, and you know, for me to be listening to you. So we have three minutes. So the way forward for Gambia in just three minutes. Well, um, just a simple message to the young people out there. Yes. Um, it's done and it's over mm -hmm. to be in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. um, that young people have to wait for their time, that young people have to wait for the future, is something that doesn't exist. 
there is nothing to it. Responsibility is responsibility. Mm -hmm. The African champions that we honor today and talk about them and give them respect and everything mm -hmm. are individuals who started everything that they were doing in their youthful days. Mm -hmm. And we must champion that cause today. Mm -hmm. Seek unity, come together. We don't have to be used as a tool mm -hmm. by political parties to achieve their own gain. Mm -hmm. um, we should all be development oriented. We all have to see a big Gambia in which everybody can live and strive for the common good. Um, we have to be patriots. We need to accommodate and respect other Africans. Mm -hmm. We need to be open to interact with other societies. But again, let us be ready to equip ourselves for the, those responsibilities ahead of us. Right. It takes knowledge, it takes determination, skills. it takes skills, it takes truthfulness, discipline, yeah. discipline honesty, mm -hmm. and Gambians can really do it. We are a very disciplined society. And to we be can do it. And we can do it. Yes, so thank I you hope so that much. that Gambians will, will uh, do so. Thank you so much, Usman. Um, I call him my Pan Africanist. Not thank even, you. he belongs to me because he's mine. <laughs> So, thank, you I, so uh, thank you so much, uh, a young, inspiring African, a Gambian for that matter. The Gambians are so proud of you, whether some people may not have the access to tell you they love what you're doing and thank they you love so you in much. person, they thank love, so they love um, the consistency that they've seen so far in you, they've, they love the, the, the aspiration, the determination, the resilience, the perseverance and everything, the audacity in you. you. They love everything about you. People were calling me, Mohammed, we just love the young man. Thank so you. it means you have a responsibility to the younger generation and even to your age group. So people are seeing you as a mentor. So all we can say, we'll pray for you and don't disappoint us. Thank you so and much. Keep your head up. It's never easy, but we can rely on you and as a generation to salvage this country. Thank you. And we wish many people to also be inspired by you. Thank you so much. Thank you so I much. And grateful. Thank you so much. That's thank Usman you. Ture, the young Pan-Africanist and a Gambian for that matter. We are so proud of him. Tonya Kiso, until we come your way next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Oi! Hey! Oi! Mona get up! Oi! Mkuu kandimi ya nungkono. Otela, mkuu bachila. Fali ya alma samba jarada. Moronga samba dunia karadanda ngobela barahanu wa nyingkono buka fisa. Foyita buka amoy siso ko hapatal sauda. Oi! Atel buka amoy siso ko hapat sauda. Moronte nene mo. Olmu number one leti nana ta jarada la fanala nyimba kumkanja. Mandung kol kafo me konkoto murkoto le konkoto kuto koto kul koto bonyalo. Andung kumkem fana sate onya dung nena matina. Ela boro fo e kalam fula bang. Fo bitung kono ma ya ku kole ala bela bang. Fo nyin dung ban diary ala bela bang. Tengo fen sukur kura ona bang. Hada madi ona jato mumburu jara ro fana bela. Si soko muni moro unolti dunia bela ala boro taya approve. Anda fanang kamu le tak ke keran? Albe mengkal ini mungkin time we skuti de. Nal tara je le tan mam mengje tel call je alam ini kira tak kuala londo le bawa le keran nak kau itu. Anda anak tara do kuala fanang tak ke keran. Abiji ati je bang alam mall bije le bal jaral. Ali bambali taje. Ila office over minto le Churchill Town. Opposite minto jauh la Sanserba. Al taje abah jaral osor le. Mula bantu 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 bantu